What's going on guys? I'm Justin Brogdon. Welcome to the 2024 Homewood Sound Studio Tour. This home studio is a dream of mine. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably have had a dream of your own epic home studio yourself or are in the process of building one right now and trying to get ideas and figure out how to make your money stretch as far as it can. And a lot of that means doing the work yourself. And that's what I did here. This room started out as a barely used writing suite with a little demo rig, a kind of formal living room that you probably have in a lot of your houses don't get a lot of action. So this was my kind of guitar room setup, And it just evolved. My drum room was my dining room originally. One day I just had a wild hair to move my old desk to the center of the room and start thinking about like, what if I was tracking drums in here? How would I do it? What do I need to do it? If I wanted to turn this space into a pro space where I could start really trying to make that transition into taking commercial clients and and dipping my toe in that water, how would I do it? And uh, before you know it, you've got Homewood Sound and I'm gonna pump take you guys through it. I think the best place to start would be the centerpiece of this studio and that is my Danger Fox Genesis 24U desk and uh, the 8U matching sidecar next to it. This desk gives that perfect hybrid feel of uh, analog and digital. So I've got a SSL UF8 controller in the middle of it. It's got faders on it. I'm able to mix with those faders and make adjustments, a lot of quick adjustments from there, which I like that balance of working mouse to actual faders. I've got a lot of rack space still left to fill up, but I've got 10 channels of Warm Audio WA273 Pre's. Six channels have the EQs, and if I'm being honest, I don't really use those EQs very often, but it is cool to have them. Got those running into the drum room, and we'll talk about how the drums are set up in a minute, but uh, I've got a few channels of Cappy stuff. I've got two VP28s and one VP312DI, which I usually dedicate that for bass guitar. I just love those Cappy VP28s. If you're unfamiliar with uh, the Cappy stuff, go to Trace Audio and I'll link Trace Audio's info in the description below and check out the stuff that they, uh, that they got going on. They got a lot of Cappy gear that they're building up. I've got the Warm Audio WA76, also a distressor, a central station remote for my monitor switching. I've got my Focal uh, Solo 6Bs along with the powered Oratones. And then the third channel actually will go, if I'm making videos and I'm sharing any mixes or anything like that, I'm taking the stereo outs of channel three in here and going into this uh, Tascam digital recorder. I do a lot of my audio goes through here for the videos. Uh, today I've got the the lav on because I'll be moving around, but I've got an 88 key semi-weighted controller. It's nice to be able to come in here and demo. As you can see, I've got on a podcast boom, I've got my Truman Audio modded SM7B. Again, I'll link that video in the description as well. A killer mod for any SM7. It allows you to put your cloud lifter up and it puts phantom power in it. Love this setup. It allows me to get in here. If I'm doing voiceover work, I can do that quickly. If I'm doing demos or vocal overdubs, this really is designed for me to be able to be creative and work quickly. And the way that I have it set up makes a lot of sense for me. So I've got a pedal board down here to my left that um, it's just a basic studio board to get me delays and reverbs and vibratos and a couple stages of drive running through my Sir Badger 18 going into my universal audio Oxbox, which just allows me to quickly get the guitar tones I want. I keep everything in here on wheels, so I'm able to roll over the guitar boats and get all the electric guitars right here when I'm tracking guitars. If I'm tracking acoustics, I can roll over the acoustic boat where everything is right where I'm working. And from a home studio standpoint, I feel like that really is a, a big advantage and something that you should consider doing in your own space if you have the space to, to do that is make things as modular as you can. That's really helped me kind of create the spaces that I need when I need them. And you're not at a surplus of space. So being able to make one room versatile, especially when you're shooting videos and recording music in here, it just makes a big, big difference. I've got a Universal Audio X16 interface and also have an Apollo Twin Quad on the desk that I really kind of control sessions and use that for all the talk back. If I need more space on the desk, I need to work from over here. Maybe I want to run the session from, from the laptop. I actually have another desk that I can pull over. And the cool thing about having, um, having everything wireless, having the wireless keyboard, wireless mouse is to be able to just transition and work from here if I need to work from here, but also be able to come over here and 
do what I need to. Behind me, you'll see we're set up. I've been, uh, I had a session the other day with a local songwriter doing some acoustic demos in here. I set up a, uh, a Neumann KM184 for the acoustic guitar and for vocals. I've got my Soyuz 0172 mic set up. This mic, the best mic I've ever put my ears on. The Soyuz mics are unbelievable. I'm very interested in trying some of their tube small condensers for overheads. Got some money to save on those though, because they are pricey. So we got a good station set up over here. I'm running the uh, Behringer P16 uh, personal monitoring system. I'm able to cue when I'm over here tracking my own demos, I'm able to cue the sessions from the iPad, keep a couple acoustics around. And um, yeah, this is just a very comfortable way to track demos in here. I've got the windows open right now, but I have panels for all of the windows so I can really close this space in. I can change the lighting. All this lighting in here is LED lighting and I'm able to change it and switch the vibe up with the phone, which comes in real, real handy. I do like having uh, the foyer to be able to get some tracking acoustic guitars in here. You can hear it's you can probably hear it's got its own kind of natural reverb to it. I have a uh, producer's choice blanket that actually fills this whole space. And uh, so I can, if I need to make this space really dead, not get any of the uh, reflection out of the foyer, I can do that. But also if I really want to control the environment that's in the foyer, putting that blanket up there just makes it easy. And being able to control the sessions from an iPad if I'm in there, it's good to have options. And again, I think if you're working in a home studio, you're, you try to figure out how to make that space be as many things as you can make it be and be convertible and modular. Right here, we've got the old guitar caddy. Another great video and a solution to a problem, being able to uh, just mount a kind of heavy duty. These are Roadrunner 7 guitar stand, electric guitar stands. They're mounted to this box that's re got recessed heavy duty wheels underneath it. We've got some, uh, some spring pulls where I can pull it around and, and get it to where I'm working with. If I'm tracking guitar in here, just to have everything to get it where I'm working, get everything in tune and be able to just go through the uh, the different cabs that I have uh, saved in my Oxbox. Just makes me be able to be productive. This whole house has turned into a very cool creative space. The house has become the studio in a lot of ways. I just happen to live at it and that's a great luxury too. But one of the challenges that you run into in a home studio is if you need microphone storage, it can be challenging to have a spot to do that. So for me, I wanted to have something that could be mobile if I need to uh, have all the mics in the drum room to be able to just get everything in one place at one time. So I started looking at different kind of roll carts. I got this at Harbor Freight and it's worked out really, really good. I can stash cables down here and then all of my mics that I'm not using go in here. We'll kind of go through what we've got in here. Some SC5s, these are just great little uh, small diaphragm condenser mics. The Warm Audio WA47, a U47 clone. The Peluso P87, there's a stereo pair of Audio-Technica AT4040s. You've got the Aston Origin large diaphragm condenser and then the uh, Cascade Fatheads. So typically what I'll have is all the dynamic mics, the 57s and stuff will go in this drawer. Drum mics go here. Shock mounts and shakers and all that kind of stuff goes down here. And then this is just sort of a catch-all, you know, I'm sure you guys have a drawer like that. So when I'm wanting to track live guitars, I'm usually just running a snake back. These are the panels that go in my, uh, in the windows in the studio. And I'll just run, I've got a, I believe it's a 50 foot snake. This goes back here and I'm able to do what I need to do. Right now I've got in here a Fender Blackface Pro Reverb, unbelievable amp. And what I'm micing it up with uh, right now is a Shure SM57 dynamic mic and a Royer 121 rhythm mic. And if you know, you know. I'm not sure not dropping any knowledge on anybody. That is a magical combination. I also like having the uh, dual mic clip from Royer, which just seats the 57 should be at the angle with where the, the 121 should be and only have to use one mic stand and be able to make short clean work of it and that's important to me but you know sometimes you got to turn your guest bedroom into uh into another recording room a lot of case storage back here and uh it definitely gets loud in this room sometimes this is a rivera silent sister and this is an isolation cab 
It's got a 75 watt selection cream back in it. Right now, I believe it's got a 57 or maybe it's got a 421 on that speaker cab. Sometimes I'll put the Royer on it. But it's nice to have that as an option. I used to run that through the uh, Badger 18, and that's all I use, but having the aux just makes things a lot easier and a lot more convenient. Uh, another cool thing to do is just set an amp back here. So that's the door to the studio, the end of that hall. And so sometimes I'll put, you know, a large diaphragm condenser at the end of the hall and then close mic it and blend those things to get guitar tones, which is way cool. Options, options are good. All right, so we're in the drum room my tracking room more or less usually it's the drums stay set up and mic'd up in here uh, the room's nothing special it's kind of a smaller room it's got eight foot ceilings so my strategy when building this room out this used to be my dining room uh, from a home studio standpoint it's like well you're not going to get the high ceilings they're going to allow you to get great room drum sounds so maybe just try to treat the hell out of it and try to get things as tight and dead as possible so that you could maybe put a room mic in the kitchen where you get good reverb or you can just use post-processing to kind of create use some of the, the great plugs by UAD sort of recreating room sounds from Ocean Way and Capital. Right now I've got two double clouds that are flown in a vault towards the center of the ceiling. The one over the drum kit does a great job of keeping the reflections from the assembles from coming down with the uh, overheads. I've got rolling gobos. I can kind of create the space that I need around here. I'll just take you through my inputs. Snare top and bottom. I'm using a Shure SM57 top and bottom. Uh, on my toms, I've got Sennheiser MD421. So just kind of tried and true stuff. Nothing elaborate or crazy. I'm definitely open to experimenting with some stuff. If you guys have some drum mics that you love using, drop me a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys are using. Uh, for my overheads, I'm using Neumann KM184s, but I'm very interested in finding some new overheads to try out. I'll also have some Cascade Fathead 2s that I'll use, ribbons for overheads sometimes. Kick in is a Shure Beta 52A. Kick out is a warm audio FET 47. That's a new addition to the Homewood Sound mic locker. Also a new addition would be this crotch mic. I've been running a Sennheiser 421 for a crotch mic, but I've read a lot of people raving about these old broadcasting mics. It's just an EV635A broadcasting mic. And uh, they say if you squash it, you just get some really cool sounds. I'm excited to try that. Uh, running one mono uh, room mic. Right now what I've got set up is my Rode NTK, which is modded out. It's got an AKG C12 style uh, capsule in it as well as a vintage Telefunken tube. The mic sounds great. I mix things up with the room mics a lot, but um, that's my drum sounds. And we've got one last spot to check out. Lastly, but certainly not leastly. If you follow my channel, you've seen this room a bunch, but this is uh, where most of the noise gets made here. This is my live room where I do a lot of rehearsing with my band and doing pre-production stuff and keep all the big amps down here. I'm able to come down here and reamp things. I've got a second kit down here that is a, uh, a Birch kit. This is a Gretsch Catalina. The one that's mic'd up upstairs in the drum room is a Maple kit. So we've got some variety and different drum sounds depending on what we're trying to get. This space is growing into another live room. Uh, this room sounds amazing. I've got a second rig. I'm in the process of setting up and ready to capture pre-production at all times. I'll just go through the gear that's down here. There's obviously a lot of PA stuff down here. We've got the obligatory Ampeg SVT Classic with the 610 cab. We've got a Silverface Super Reverb, a heavily modded out uh, 75 Mark II Master Volume Marshall 100 watt head going through a 412 cab that is loaded with 65 watt Celestian Greenbacks. And of course we've got the high watt and uh, that cab is an open back 212. It's got uh, Celestian G1265s and I've got my pedal board down here. But again, this is just a place that a lot of songs are flushed out. A lot of demos are cut down here. This room is where Homewood Sound was dreamt up. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. If you made it to the end of this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, I would like to invite you to hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you get notified when the videos come out. 
and uh, feel free to drop me a comment. Let me know your feedback and what you think about the space. If you have any gear that you would like to recommend that you love using in your own space, I'd love your input. And I think that's gonna conclude our 2024 studio tour. If you're interested in coming and checking the studio out in person or booking some time, get some recordings done, and you're in the Athens or greater Atlanta area, my email as well as my socials are listed in the description below. Drop me a message and we'll connect. I'm Justin Brogdon. This is Homewood Sound. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace.